Hey friends, you are with Kim Byers at the Celebration Shop and today we are getting ready for those back to school pictures. So if you're like me, you'd like to at least get one good shot of the kiddos when they're headed back to school and sometimes you even get that last day of school picture so you can, you know, they just look so cute and they change so much. So I'm going to show you a really simple, easy way um, to make a really fun back to school photo prop. Um, for the kids to hold up the morning of. And actually a lot of times, just so you know, I take our pictures on the Sunday or the day before they go back to school just because tensions aren't as high and they're excited about, you know, putting on some new clothes and we don't get frowny faces and all that kind of jazz. <laughs> so just food for thought bombs. You might want to actually take back to school pictures the day before back to school. Um, okay, so let's hop over to Cricut Design Space. I'll show you what we're doing and then we'll hit the craft table and we'll pull it all together and it's super, super easy and I think you guys are really gonna love it. Okay, oh, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing here today and please hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space and I've already brought in a couple of things just to get us started. So we are making a photo prop for your kiddo to hold um, in their first day back to school pictures or you could make this for their last day of school um, as well. But what I wanted to show you is that you can create your very own um, completely from scratch or you can you know, do a pre-purchased one, which I have one of those today, um, from the store and then embellish it to be personalized. So if you want to start totally from scratch, these are actually some of my designs that are available in Cricut Design Space. So if you go into images and if you just type Kim Byers back to school, it's going to bring up um, most of the items in that cartridge. The cartridge is actually called Rule the School. Um, so if you do that, you can actually see you know, all of the, the items in that particular cartridge. But if you scroll down, so this one um, is like a little schoolhouse, and then I have another that um, is I some Halloween and Christmas, Thanksgiving. There's lots of stuff in here, guys. Um, but this one is like a chalkboard. So these are pre-designed, so you can bring those into your mat, which I've already done. Um, and then you could also, I have apples. Um, there we go. So we have the apples. And by the way, I just have to tell you, this is like one of my favorite. Um, I did this little bookmark with a little worm on top. And this little white piece that you hear, see here is a cut where you can put it over the top of the page. Um, I need to make that with you guys one day. I love that one. So you can insert all of these into your mat. I'm going to hit cancel just because I already have them in there. But basically these two are print then cut. So that means that um, you don't have to have all the different papers and things. You literally just embellish it like I put this on it. Um, I'm a first grader and so you can embellish it to say whatever you want it to say. And this one, the little school, if you look at it in layers, you can also turn off the I'm A um, and you know change the lettering or the wording to be anything you want it to be. So it doesn't have to um, say I'm a first grader. It could be you know, your child's name and their year or, you know, anything like that. And just move that back up. So if you want to do it this way, once you have that information in, what you would do is grab both of those elements and then you could um, flatten them. And so it would make it an actual piece or printed like all at the same time. So when you send it to Matt, now that you flattened those words onto that design of the school, then it will go to the mat as one piece and then it would print all as just one piece. And the same is true for this one. Um, this is just a um, chalkboard and I added information to it. And if you look at this, you if you're grabbing them both, you can you know make it as big or as small as you want it to be. So for today, what I wanted to show you though is that you can take the Apple design um, and create your own. So I'm going to be embellishing an apple that I bought at Target from like the dollar section, but you could, um, you know, use paper or cardstock, or um, you could use, if you're using the maker, you would be able to cut it out of chipboard or even some of the thinner woods that are available for Cricut and make your own apple. Um, 
and this could be vinyl on top to make the apple red or you could paint it and you could do vinyl for the lettering. There's lots of ways to make really fun elements for your kiddos. Today we're going to be doing something a little more simplistic to this. We're not going to be cutting out thick items or uh, doing print then cut, although I'll put videos up above showing you exactly how to do that. So if you want to make these, you'll be able to do that. But what we're going to do today is we are going to embellish a pre-existing um, apple. And so there's curved lettering that we're going to do, and then we're just basically going to work with vinyl and add that vinyl to our apple. Just a little side note, for those of you who really want to be able to have that big wooden apple like I'm going to be working with today, and you can't find it at Target, I'm putting a link down below um, in the description to an apple like this on Amazon. Now, it's not painted, but you could do one of two things. You could either cut out the vinyl um, and lay it on top of the wood, or you could just take um, you know, paint crafts, um, red and green and brown, and paint your apple yourself and then add your vinyl to it. Okay, so let's move on to cutting our vinyl. So I've hidden everything that we've been talking about with the exception of this apple and the lettering that I'm gonna cut out in vinyl, which is her name, uh, her year, and um, her teacher's name. I enlarged the apple to be about the size of the one that I'll be using um, to, to apply the vinyl to. But I wanted to show you this really quickly. So you can, you know, obviously use any font and you can use any color and all those types of things that you want to. But when you're working with something pre-existing, sometimes you have to be able to mush some text into an area um, that you didn't design, right? So I wanted to show you how to curve text. So on um, the Apple that I'm working with, they have this little banner and you actually kind of put the child's name inside of the banner. And so it's slightly curved. So when you type out a name and it affects different fonts different ways, but you can easily go up to curve and then just curve it as much or as little as you want and you can go both directions. Okay, so I'm going to turn off my Apple and then I have all of these materials here. So you can look at them in panels. So I have the year, the name, um, and then the teacher's name. Okay, and so let's go ahead and hit make it. Okay, so it comes up and asks you which type of mat you want. Unfortunately, I don't have a white smart vinyl, so we're going to be using on the mat today. And now it's showing me what my mat's going to look like. So there's two different size mats, and I'm going to be able to cut this one in a six inch mat. So I'm just going to move, I mean, I can't salvage any of that vinyl over in the corner anyway, so I'm just going to move these over slightly so it'll make it easier for me to cut between them when I weed them out. Smidge. There we go. So, um, and because we are using vinyl and not iron on, you don't have to mirror, and you can kind of check everything out over in the side panel, and we're good. Continue. So now it's finding my machine, and the Joy only connects via Bluetooth, it does not connect via cord. Okay, so now it's going to pop up and bring up mostly the smart materials just because it knows it's the Joy and um, these are materials that are typically used with the Cricut Joy, but we need to get just premium vinyl. So we hit all materials. I'm going to scroll to the bottom, which you notice that's a much smaller list than it is if you're doing the Maker or the Explore Air. Um, and we are going to grab premium vinyl. Okay, so now we have premium vinyl. We already have our fine point blade in the machine and we're ready to go over to the craft table and kind of put it all together. So here we are on the craft table, and so this is what we're working with today. This is the um, little apple that I got from the dollar section of Target. So this is transfer tape. This is vinyl, white vinyl. Um, I have my Cricut Joy. I have my cutter. I use typically use this for um, cutting all of my materials just to keep everything straight, all my pieces and parts. Um, I have a weeding tool and then I have my ruler. And then there are two mats that come with the Joy. So there is the small green mat, which is one we're gonna be using today, and this is a standard grip. And then they also have up to 12 inches. Now the Joy is only gonna cut four and a half inches wide, but you can cut 12 inches long. But today we're just gonna use the green mat. Um, and so let's go ahead and clear everything out of the way and cut out our vinyl to go on our mat.
What I love most about this trimmer is the fact that it has a ruler um, both directions and so when I'm cutting my materials I can make sure that I get everything precise. So I want a six and a half inch by four and a half. So if I have six and a half inches here and I look here on this part of the ruler, I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, but I go to the four and a half inch mark and then I just cut upwards and then I'm going to be able to, um, depending on the piece of material, you could stick it back in for this because I don't want to trim it off. I want to leave it on the roll. I'm going to use a pair of scissors to cut off that last piece and then it'll fit perfectly on our mat. Now we're ready to put our vinyl on the mat. And so when you have vinyl that has been on a roll for a while, it wants to curl. And so it makes it difficult to get it onto the mat without sticking to the other areas. So what I suggest doing is either making it kind of a taco, um, or sometimes you can kind of, if it's a longer piece, you can roll it up and then lay it down like that. But do this so that you can get your edges where you want them without the other piece you know, attaching to the sticky area. And then just use your scraping tool to kind of put it into place so you don't have any bubbles. Okay, so now we're ready to cut. Let's insert our mat. Just put it under the feeds. Okay, so we're done. So we'll pull out our mat close up our machine and put it out of the way. One of the things I love about the Joy, it's so tiny. Okay, so now what we want to do is weed out our design. And sometimes I will weed, um, I'll take the whole thing off the mat, and we can do that. So just flip it over and always bend your mat and not your material. And just take it off of the mat, put the mat to the side, and then you take your weeding tool and just weed out all the excess Transfer tape is really, really easy to use. It has all these great grids on it so that you can make sure you get everything aligned perfectly. And I've gone ahead and cut out a piece of transfer tape that we can use for all of these different elements. And so all you need to do is just take your transfer tape at the corner and peel it away. So once you have um, the transfer tape in place, just use the scraping tool to make sure that you get it in between all of the crevices and things and all the little areas within the letters and then peel it up and then take your the backer and pull the backer away okay that looks pretty good so now that we have that in place you can go ahead and take your scraping tool and put your vinyl down getting around all the little edges just like you did when you picked it up off of the paper and then once you think you have it in place really well, we'll move our ruler out of the way. We'll take our transfer tape and we're gonna pull at an angle. And if it pulls up a little bit, guys, that's okay, no worries. Just go over it again and then go slowly at an angle. Okay, we put preschool down and so we're kind of doing the same thing. We're measuring, um, this is roughly 12 inches across and I'm using the dots from the teacher piece here just to make sure that I'm straight. So we'll go about six inches in and we wanna be in the center of our word. Okay, and we'll put it down with my fingers and just the same process. Okay, so what did you think? That was really easy, right? So make one of these, put your kids out there and make them, you know, put them outside. I love outdoor <laughs> pictures for back to school, especially if my kids don't ride the bus, but I always sort of put them on the driveway um, with kind of like the illusion that they, <laughs> that they ride the bus. I'm sure they love that. Um, but I do like to get that really, you know, kind of cool, iconic um, back to school picture. And so now you'll have something for them to hold so that you don't ever have to guess what year it was again. So you'll know exactly what year the photo was taken. Um, and if you guys would um, hop down in the description below and check out all the materials that we used today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my very best to get back with you. I want you to have fun crafting and I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join me every week for new videos. Okay guys, see you next time.